Graham Elwood, one of the nicest guys you could find. You know, he might not be a reporter in the field, but he works hard. I think he does five or six live streams a week. He's built a channel. I, I don't know what he has. I think like 70-something, 70 70,000 subscribers. It's hard work to build a channel. Jen and I have been working six, seven days a week for three years to build this. We just passed 109,000 subscribers, by the way. But Graham Elwood, I guess he did a segment on JFK's assassination, and all of a sudden he's demonetized? Well, JFK's assassination is one of the most commonly discussed scandals in American history. There's a gazillion books about it. There's a gazillion documentaries about it. it there's a whole industry on JFK's assassination. By the way, just me saying the words JFK assassination probably means this video is going to be demonetized or this channel will be demonetized. That's not a democracy. Silicon Valley does not have the right. I don't care if it's a private platform. You do not have the right to dictate what is the acceptable topics, what is not the acceptable topics. And the truth is, and I've seen, I've seen YouTube's explanations when they took down our live videos, historic footage that John Farina shot for us at the Capitol. I'm not exaggerating. He put his life on the line. When you are in those situations, how would he know, or if I was there, which I wasn't, how do you know if shots are going to be fired any minute when you have a mob storming the Capitol? How do you know if it, shots are not going to start firing at any minute? There were armed militiamen. You know, who is Google and YouTube? When they took down our historic footage, they said, uh, this is advancing claims, advancing false claims of election fraud. You know, they said years ago, the banks, if they're too big to fail, they must be taken down. Well, if your algorithm is too stupid or too incompetent or intentionally designed not to distinguish between mobs that are actually storming the Capitol to stop a, an election from being certified, if YouTube and Facebook, if they're technology, their algorithms cannot tell the difference between, you know, loony Q QAnon channels who are part of this storming of the Capitol, which, by the way, is insurrection. Uh, you know, these channels that are minimizing it, oh, it's just a few knuckleheads out there. Yeah, tell that to the five people who died. You f***ing idiots. Excuse me, mom. Sorry, I cursed. If you can't distinguish between the people involved in the mob and the channels that are doing, say it with me, news coverage, then you are too stupid to exist and too big to be a private company. You need to be publicly regulated. You know, life is short. I'm not going to stay away from certain topics for fear of Big Brother. And you want to know something? Tonight? Or tomorrow morning, I might be the next to get an email channel demonetized, which would be horrendous for us. Because you should understand, it's not just that they demonetize the channels, making super chats not possible, making no way you could make money on videos. With the demonetization, demonetization, with that demonetization, it further suppresses your channel. So you don't show you, you show up less in people's feeds. You show uh, you, basically we were hidden in a cave for a very long time. We're still basically hidden. They do that more. So it's not just the fact that you lose the ability to make money. You lose the ability to get, build your audience. So to me, you know, I understand that the corporate media is fixated on Marjorie Taylor Greene, a QAnon nut who's now a congressperson who said 9-11 didn't really happen, who said Parkland was, you know, a false flag and all these things. She's a nut. I get it. I understand they want to cover that, nine, you know, all day, every day now, instead of the fact that 
The Democratic Party is already moonwalking on their promises to people in Georgia. The Democratic Party is currently negotiating against itself to water down badly needed relief, which I'm going to get to after this. But I don't know. I kind of think it's a big deal when Silicon Valley is literally just purging alternative voices, alternative thoughts. You ever, you ever read the book 1984? If you haven't and you have time, read it because that's what this is. And you want to know who is hurt the most by all of this in this channel's case? Because again, at this moment, let me check because who knows? At this moment, we are still monetized. The fact that the media has no concerns about this at all shows you they are not, this is CNN, MSNBC, New York Times, Washington Post, they're not journalists. They are vehicles for advertisers. And when YouTube puts in its little takedown notices, this is harmful content for our viewers. And it's also harmful to our advertisers. Just take away harmful to our viewers because it ain't about the viewers and harm to our users. The key phrase is this is harmful to our advertisers because that's what all of this is about. And we should just drop the facade that YouTube is YouTube. It's not YouTube anymore. It's FewTube. When news and information platforms are openly being twisted and mangled into a very nice sanitized sandwich for corporate advertisers. That's no longer news and information. That is state-run fascism. And there's different forms of fascism. There's what we saw in the Holocaust, and then there's lower forms of fascism. But if you Google and do the research on what are the precursors to fascism, one of the precursors to fascism is censorship. And that's what we're seeing right now. So I'm not saying, I'm not saying this is the technical, you know, the technical or technocratic Holocaust. But when you, the government, allows Silicon Valley to basically pick and choose winners, you know, I've been off for a week, so I didn't get into this GameStop stuff. But well, everybody's been talking about the manipulation the manipulation of Wall Street that is exposed through this GameStop story and these Reddit users fighting back and using, you know, giving the Wall Street short sellers a taste of their own medicine. Well, guess what? That same manipulation that has been exposed by the Redditors, now that CNBC is freaking out now that poor people and working class people are fighting back, that same manipulation and rigged system is right here on YouTube. Because YouTube is using its algorithm to manipulate the information war, to flood your feed with CNN, with MSNBC, which used to get, I don't know, a couple thousand views per video. Now they're getting hundreds of thousands of views. What changed? Did people suddenly fall in love with Wolf Blitzer and Morning Joe? Or are people's feeds being flooded with that kind of content while channels like this who on shoestring budgets go to Flint 17 times to tell you, yeah, the water's still poison. Seven years later, hey, here's the government officials that caused this and then covered it up, who go to show you the fights on the ground against pipelines, who cover Black Lives Matter long before George Floyd became a national historic moment, who went to Louisiana, uh, Louisville to cover the murder of Breonna Taylor, who went to Ohio and Detroit to cover 15,000 General Motors workers being laid off. I didn't see any corporate outlets there. Frankly, I didn't see any independent outlets there. Who went to Seattle to cover the economic terrorism of Amazon. Who Jeff Bezos just stepped down. I ain't taking credit for it, but it's a good day. There's a whole long extra list of stories we've done on a shoe string budget. Hope you enjoyed that last video. Hop on over to statuscoup.com where you can sign up for our email list and become a member for as low as five to $10 a month. 
Membership is how we grow. That's statuscoup.com slash join. And remember, join our email list so we can grow the revolution with you.